Hi guys, welcome to another video of my YouTube channel. So we are going to create a pattern and like for this surface, you can see the surface is plain. Uh, so like it's fluid, like it's not a flat surface, but we just want to create a pattern like an extrusion and we just going to apply it to this surface. So that's our goal for this video. Before we are going into the video, please do the subscribe, please press the subscribe button. So it will be helpful uh, for you to get notified whenever I'm posting the videos. Okay. So for the first, like, uh, let's create an X again, maybe here. And let's, uh, like, uh, let's give a value. Like, um, number of, yeah. So this value is like extent x and extent y is like it it asks like how many x seconds do you want or in the x axis and how many x seconds you want in y axis. So just a component which allows you to create n number of x seconds. You can also create it separately by your own algorithm. But when you have a component like this, why do you want to waste time to create it? Okay. So like let's uh, give the number of the size. You can change the size of each x second. So technically first we can change the number and like it's kind of doing two things at the same time. First thing is like it creates this x second based on the size then it does the array like uh, rectangular array or box array. So yeah, both the process is done in the same component. So why not? So we created this and we going to export the curve like extract the curve and we are going to save this curve in the param uh component parametric component or like a uh, uh, the component which shows the data it's kind of a storage box or something for in a, in a general term okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to explore this let's try to explore actually this script was done during my erasmus it was my assignment for some computational design so i thought like why not it, i really feel this one is interesting so i thought of sharing this to you so let's see so now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to create area. You can also get the center from here. Okay. Sorry. Point. So you can also get the center of the hexagon from here. So it's up to you. So technically what I'm doing is like I'm exploding ex uh, exploding uh, the curves. So I just use bifocal. So this is a component will gives you a label on the component so that it is easy for you to see what component we're using like instead of logo you can use this so that you can see the label like the name of the component you can download this from the website called food for rhino where you can see a lot of plugins for grasshopper so when i explode this okay i'll just show you let's uh, simplify So you can see like uh, there is 11 branches. What is branches mean? Like technically it shows like, um, okay, wait, I'll just show you three branch. Okay. So you can see like one branch consists of one rows of like uh, the 11 uh, hexagons. So the same way like when you create like 11 by 11 it asks like 11 hexagons in a single branch and 11 branches has been created so this is how it works okay the branches so what i'm going to do is like when i explore this segment right so each uh hexagon has been uh explore it's um i mean how do i say explore it okay so you can see like number of six okay So you can see like one, two, three, four, five, six. So each hexagon, which is ex uh, like explored as like stored in a single branch with the six lines. So technically like sub branches, not. So this branch, like it's kind of a tree. So when it goes like this, so this one, like uh, it got separated, like this one has got separating. So it has one hexagon with six branches, another hexagon with six branches. Then overall it has like 11 x second in the branches. So it's like going into sub branches. Okay. So these got exploded. Like you can see like uh, six uh, curves has been stored. And I give like, okay, wait, let's like uh, try to simplify this. Yeah. 
So now I'll just use a panel over here. Let's say like zero comma one. Okay. Let's give this value here and uh, let's connect the segments over here. Okay. The path one does not exit within the three. Okay. So I need to use a semicolon instead of this. So now you can see like this branch has six different uh, segments. So, so that's what I'm trying to do. Like I'm just splitting this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude the point. Okay. So this point, I'm going to exclude it with these segments of each segment. So in this case, when I exclude this, I'm going to create a base point. So it is like it's the data is not working because they have six segments and the point is repeatedly like it got the data is like mismatching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to X like graft it. So when I graph this, so when I graph this, do this each point like the, the point it's like it matches when it graphs. So each point is matching with each branches. So like uh, each branch. So each one segment is branched. So this point is branched with this. This point is branched with this. This point is branched. So in this sub branch, the point has been uh, like uh, the exclusion has been creating with each segment. The point is one point, but it has like six repeated values. So that is so to understand more about this, you need to learn about like shorter list and longer list, like how this list data matching is working. You need to understand the data matching concept and vector algorithm, vector and mathematical uh, formulation to understand the because now in general you can understand the concept but you need to learn what process has been happening behind the component okay inside the component so that process is technically it's like a max okay it's like mathematics so once you started working with algorithm it's easy to for you to move forward with c uh, like c sharp or python like coding way because like when you work, like if you are remembering, like when you on your school days, you will just for creating an uh, like an algorithm, like creating a coding uh, like script, you just need to create a flow chart first. Like first, you need to work on the flow chart, then you need to work. So flow chart gives you an understanding. The same algorithm is a kind of a flow chart. Okay. So now we created this. Now I just want this triangle. Okay, this triangle. I want a center point now. Okay, I'll just take a pen over here. So you can see there is a triangle like this. Now each triangle, I want a center point. Now I want to create a line like this and move this point. So when I move this, so it will be like a prism. So the same process I'm going to do here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a curve again with this. So I got the hexagonal curve, which I created the same process. Okay. Now I'm going to like, let's use this the same. So let's connect it here and uh, area. Yeah, let's connect it here. Okay. So you can see it's like again a mess. So what we didn't do, we didn't do graft. Okay. So you can see like this triangle is again subdivided. You can do this again. Like what you can do is control C. So you can like again do it. So you can see that again, this triangle is subdivided. Then you can do again. So you can see the triangle is again subdivided. So I, I just, I'm just sh sharing the process behind this. Okay. So I just need this. So in this case, it's flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this point. Move like uh, move and like you need a Z in Z axis. Okay. And I'm just going like 1.5 or something maybe. So you can see it's been moved above like moved in Z axis. So, so it's like we can like uh, the uh, for an algorithm is like input, output and intermediate process. Okay. So the intermediate process, like first you connect to this, then you create another sub intermediate process by in, in influencing, like by include, like uh, including move component inside the comma, like the script. So this is how it works. Okay. 
like now we got the pattern over here so now what i need to do is i'm going to create this surface like i'm going to map this on the surface so these two are like random like these we don't know what is the size of the surface and we don't know what is the size of this so how do we do it first we need to uh, bring the surface because if you see the surface is in rhino i just want it in grasshopper what you can do is i uh, you just create params like surface then you set select set one surface so the surface is set when i delete the surface sorry i just show you in the pan okay so when you delete there is one reference surface when i delete the surface you don't see like uh, the one you linked stored in the surface uh, it's like it's kind of uh, not not seen here like it, it shows empty because it's like it's kind of a live sync but in this case what i used to do is like you can internalize the data so once it's there this data is already stored in this para like uh, surface parameters like an untrimmed surface so now even if i delete this i can have this surface in this parameter and i can bake this if you want okay so let's hide this there is a lot of ways to do the same thing in grasshopper as well as in rhino but i'm just using this process you can also find other process in other youtube channel interesting so everyone are sharing the knowledge okay in their own way of up, like a uh, own way of approaches so at the end of the day you have lot of com like lot of co context over a single software so you can improve yourself by learning like different things for like you just need to be patient to see like youtube channel just know the process like first instead of trying directly to the big script try with the smaller script try to understand what is behind that so like instead of doing like a single script try to do a script without seeing it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use map surface so for map surface i need three uh, three like curve source and target so for surface i'm going to use this and like why i'm using a curve here because like you can use it in morph uh, surface like there is different component but for for now when we i'm just showing this map to surface is like it maps a curve to a surface okay so it can be a curve can be any anything it can be 3d or it can be flat so i'm using the i'm just extracting the curve from the extruded point and i'm connecting the curve here okay so now like uh, i'm just using so for the source like we know the target and we know the but i just need some references okay so and you can see like uh, i'll just use bounding box bounding box so technically this surface like this curve has been created from the base of this curve if i'm not wrong so i'm going to use this curve has here and you see like uh this one has been created now let's give a surface and now i just you can see like i just want to see the component over here you can see it's created like flat box flat box like different flat box because this per object creates each flat box for a single surface so what i'm going to do is i'm getting like creating a union box then also it's not working because every, it creates union box for a single branch so what i do is i flatten this so you get a single component okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect this surface over here let's see whether it's working or not yeah so now it worked okay you can see like we doesn't we don't know the surface size of this and we don't know the surface size of this we just use bounding box here because like bounding box is like um for i'll just show you something else also bounding bo box is like it provides like uh, how do i say so you can see like it provides like a guidance box like see everything it's like it's kind of working in a space when you map it but we need some reference so that in that place this box is so useful so it is like a kind of references object okay so now we got this now you will be asking bro like everything is a curve what we are going to do with this you can use like each everything is a curve but it's not like a fluidity like it's a straight line which is being connected and we are extracting the curve from the extrusion so when we are extracting from the extrusion then you can do bounding surface if i'm not wrong yeah so you can do bounding surface it's like a like a five to ten minutes co command line like for example like uh, maybe like 
I just use like two or three components, like a major process and like I use like 10 to 15 components and you get something like parametrical, uh, like a pattern in a single process. Okay. That's a good thing in, um, in a uh, grasshopper, you can increase it. So you can increase it, you can decrease it, but you can't increase the size of the surface because here, this surface which we inputted from the Rhino is pin fixed. It's not parametrical. When you create this surface in Grasshopper, then you can also change this surface based on your comfort. So what I so after this, like you can create a sun path and you can make this point move towards the sun path. Like you create a point here and you create a vector, and you can make this triangle not facing straight like uh, the uh, the 3d shape like it can point over in different uh, directions like an attractor so you can do a lot of things with grasshopper so i hope you understand something from this video and if you have any doubts or like uh, any like uh, comments on this video let me know in the comment section and if you want me to make something interesting like you can suggest me some models which you want to see some tutorials uh like uh, i can make it for you okay thank you for watching the video please do the subscribe and share it to your friends who will whom do you think this will be helpful thank you have a good day bye bye